The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. I am at the Huron Research Station catching up with Chris Gillard from University of Guelph. Chris, how's it going? Great, Bern. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I want to talk about disease here today. Um, you do a lot of research on fungicides and diseases, and you've do, you actually talk to growers a lot too. And you've uh, you've done some research on, on growers and what they're seeing in their fields. What's the biggest disease they have to tackle? Yeah, biggest disease we have in dry beans in Ontario, Bern, is white mold. Uh, Sixty-seven percent of the growers find it to be their biggest disease problem. In fact, seventy-five percent of the growers say it's their number one production problem. Now, why is it such a problem? So, white mold just loves beans, and we work to get a big, healthy crop. We got good rotations. We put it on our best ground, and we get big growth and, and chance for mold. What happens when we get big mold? I mean, what type of losses are we looking at from a range perspective? Yeah, so, I mean, we can have anything from just a trace. A lot of guys this year just have a trace of mold. Uh, some years it can go as high as 75% yield loss. 50% wow. disease, 75% yield loss. Now, Chris, you do a lot of research on fungicides here at the research station, and um, you've got some an interesting data set here, uh, 2018 to 2022, um, looking at, you know, the most sort of efficacious um, fungicides on white mold. What are you seeing? What's, who are the winners? Yeah, so uh, we're standard products, the best products we got in the marketplace right now, ProPulse and Allegro, those are the two that growers are using and, and they're listening well to us when we, when we talk to them about that. We've looked at nine other fungicides the last five years. Uh, four or five of them were kind of mediocre. Uh, actually three of them were, were really just no effect whatsoever on the disease. And so we're still sticking to ProPulse and Allegro as the top two products in the marketplace today. In the today. marketplace. What type of, I guess, disease protection can we get with, with those top products? Chris, um, you, again, you've got some numbers on that. Yeah, so we've summarized data from a number of years. Uh, we've got a lot of data on ProPulse and Allegro. We're getting a 50% reduction in disease severity, 75% uh, increase in yield. Returns to the grower of $400 an acre is typical from these products. Wow. Now, talk about application sort of strategy, Chris. I mean, two, two applications, timing. You know, every year is different, but, you know, what's, uh, what's probably the, the best sort of starting approach? Yeah. So what the survey told me last winter I thought was really great, 41% of the growers are putting that first application on. And when I talk to growers at meetings, they say, yeah, we are timing it at that three pin bean stage, and that's critical. Get it on early, because these are protective products. And then you can look at the weather forecast and decide, is it a lot of rain? Is there rain in the forecast? Do I still have a big crop? Do I need to put that second app on to protect it? And about 46% of the growers are putting that second app on to give some added protection. Final question, Chris, and that is about timing this year. I mean, obviously, I mentioned earlier, every year is different. What do we learn or see this year from a timing perspective? So this year, I mean, it was really all over the place. A lot of growers were dry, and they were dry throughout that July, August period. So they were really good with timing that first fungicide. I heard that from a number of growers at recent tours that we've had here. They've timed that first fungicide. And then they looked at the weather forecast, and they said, there's just no reason for me to go out and spray a second time. And But a lot of years, it's really important that first timing's critical, but don't cheap out and, and forget that second timing because that, if we get rainfall from that first timing on, that's 10 to 14 day period, that's all that that protects. So at that 14 day point, you've really got to decide, am I pulling the trigger or not? Yeah. And hey, the final point is you're going back to your research again, you did some, you know, some impact on the numbers on the value uh, per acre. Um, what did you find? Yeah, so we had between two and $400 return per acre. We'd even get a return of 150 bucks over old products that we used to use compared to the new products, the Allegro and the Pro Pulses of today. So the last point I want to make is if you're using Ontario seed, add a strobe in with your, with your white mold fungicide. So that's like Quatris, um, Acapella. If you are using Idaho seed, you don't need that strobe. 
Okay, so save the money if you can. Yeah, and that's a, a going back to the point where a lot of seed comes from Idaho, and you don't have a, you know that you don't have problem. that disease problem in the seed lots. No. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, Chris, it's been great having you on the Edible Bean School. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Bernie.